Hello, I'll be talking about matrix assisted laser desorption ionization time of light, otherwise known as MALDI-TUF, as a rapid biological identification technique. My name is Andrea Monroy. I am a PhD student at the nanoengineering department. So we will be talking about the physical mechanisms, the data analysis, the resolution limits and the frontier, strengths and weaknesses and applications. So first of all, the physical mechanism. The analytes are, analytes, I mean the sample, are co-crystallized with a matrix material that absorbs laser light and transfer energy to the analyte, releasing it into a gas phase. So first of all, we have the laser. We are gonna start liberating the sample and in this gas phase. As you see, they are being separated by mass to charge ratio, and then they'll be detected. So first, the small, the small mass to charge ratio will be detected, then the medium, and then the bigger one. We will have a spectrum, and in this spectrum, as you see in pink, we have the first mo molecule, then in blue, the medium molecule, and in orange, the big molecule. So you can see how, by mass to charge ratio, they are being separated in this spectrum we will have this number, number like 4651.4. And this number we will go to a database and search for which molecule has that kind of, of mass. So from there, we can actually know the molecules we're dealing with. Then what are the resolution limits? Well, it has a micron resolution and small concentration samples and up to subfemtomols can be actually read by this mechanism. So if you have a body fluid from a forensic lab or if you have bacteria, then you can actually measure it with this technique. The frontier or future perspectives are that it has, maybe we can improve the sensitivity or detect more types of samples such as antibodies. And as I was mentioning, you need a matrix. So what if we take get rid of the matrix. And this is another approach called SALDI. Then let's take the human error away and automation is being attempted for this technique. The strengths and weaknesses. So it has a broad detectable mass range, which is a huge strength. You can detect very small, very big, different kinds of molecules. It has a high speed, high specificity, it's very rapid, it can take two minutes, up to two hours, depending on the sample complexity. It's easy to use, cheap, and environmentally friendly in comparison to current sequencing machines such as PCR. The weakness is it then has a low sensitivity, low reproducibility, low resolution, and the greatest weakness is that databases are private. So if you want to know what are your actually your sample is, you're gonna to have to search in places that are private. Now, what are the applications? For clinical microbiology, it has been used to identify bacteria, fungi, and viruses, and to understand bacterial mechanisms, such as antibiotic resistance. For forensic sciences, you can use it to identify and characterize body fluids from crime zines. And you can also identify from this same sample illicit drugs. For environmental sciences, it has been used for the characterization of microplastics. Finally, this technique, as I was mentioning, you grab the sample, it's in a matrix, you use a laser, you're gonna separate it and detect in this beautiful spectrum. Thank you, the references are in the description. Here are more videos if you're interested and the references. Hope you like this video, give it a thumbs up and bye-bye.